Once again, Cole was lured back into the underworld. Following the big bat's echo was getting old. He was really ready to find that cross.
is empty. The only thing inside were notes about how the cross was made. Oh, and Lord, did Ignatius get that thing made. The core was made of sacred wood. No joke. Edged in silver from King Solomon's temple, dipped in holy water from the Vatican, and blessed by the big guy himself. It was the ultimate bloodsucker slayer. And it was still out there somewhere. And if my buddy was gonna take down Mary, he'd need that weapon. The trouble was, he just had one night to find it. In the hours since being bit, Cole's body kept changing. New sensations started tickling at his brain. And he had to follow him. Couldn't help himself. While following those finger marks, Cole started to feel something. A sense of belonging. It creeped him out. lit up in his mind. He could understand what had been written there. It was a story meant to educate new vampires about the life and times of that blood-sucking bitch, Bloody Mary. As I was strolling along the waterfront this evening, I was mistaken for a lady of the night by a group of three sailors. They sought to engage me, but could not agree over which one of them would get the pleasure of my company. Fortunately, I was able to play peacemaker. I assured them that if they could provide a soundproof room and a door with a sturdy lock, I would be happy to entertain all three of them. Well, this bargain was acceptable to all parties, and they were able to meet at least half my terms. The lock on the door was quite sturdy, and while some of their screams may have escaped the room, the sailors did not.
You've got a bad attitude, Mr. McGrath. Come sun up. That's going to change. Newborn fool! 